Let's look at chapter 9, which is witness and discipleship, one of the most incredible parts of the literacy lesson. So after reading and writing, the student's brain will be ready for a break. And this is a great time to enter into more spiritual things. So the third part of the literacy lesson is the witness and discipleship. Now, witness refers to sharing the good news about Christ with non-believers, whereas discipleship refers to helping Christians grow in grace and faith, learning more about God and growing closer to Him. Since both witnessing and discipling are things of eternal value, their importance in the literacy lesson can't be overemphasized. So first, let's talk about witnessing. Now, witnessing in a literacy class is going to happen, whether we plan for it or not, but it should be natural and not overly rehearsed. With that said, planning our witness and testimony is always a good idea. Taking time to witness about God's love in the class can literally change the lives of the students. Around the world, there are tons of testimonies about literacy being used for evangelism. Let me give you an example that's near and dear to my heart. One of the first trainings I did was in Guatemala, in the northern part of the country, in a Quechi village. There had been a nonprofit organization that had been working there for about three years doing all kinds of community development projects. They did latrines, they did water catchment systems, they did stoves and fireplaces, but there was no conversion. There was no effect of people coming to Christ. And I went and trained a couple of their workers there to go and start a literacy class in their own language to learn how to read Ketchi using Bible content primers. And they went and they found that even though there were no believers and even though people were kind of antagonistic about hearing the Christian message, in the context of the literacy class, they welcomed the stories from the Bible. And little by little, the women in the class started to learn to read and they started to ask questions about the scripture verses that were being read and several of the women became believers. As a result of that, they wanted to stay after class and talk more about the Bible and the scriptures that they had read. They wanted to sing, they wanted to pray. And the literacy teacher became their mentor, their discipler, their pastor, as it were. And soon they went back and talked to their families and got their husbands involved and shared their faith with them. They wanted to come to the classes as well and stick around for the songs and the prayers. And it became a full-fledged church by the end. And it was just a beautiful transformation to watch, whereas some of these other projects hadn't had the lasting effect of really eternal heart change when the literacy teacher came and spent time each week going back, discipling them, talking with them, answering their questions, uh, that was where, where the true change happened. So that's one of my favorite stories. Uh, and what happened in that village is a great example of the fact that really a lot of times we have to first earn the right to ask a person to become a follower of Jesus. We have to spend time with them. We have to form that relationship with them. Uh, teaching a person to read helps us to earn that right to witness. Dr. Laubach, who's one of the greatest literacy apostles in the world, said, Every new word we teach a non-reader is like another golden string, tying the hearts of the teacher and the student together. So now let's talk about some helpful ideas when considering how to do your portion of the witnessing section. The first thing to think about is to plan a silent and indirect witness. But what do we mean by silent witness? I mean, think about the way that you look and act. A little bit later on, we'll talk about how non-literate adults watch the teacher's face to know if he really wants to teach them. So smile often. Don't frown. Show love and pray quietly throughout the entire lesson. By the end of the lesson, your students will be ready for your witness. Also, think about the way you speak. During the lesson, everything that you say becomes a part of your witness. Speak softly and move slowly about the class. Choose your words carefully, speak positively, and most of all, praise abundantly. The next type of evangelism we'll talk about is what we can do with an open and direct witness. So part of your class preparation to, should be to plan an open and direct witness. Now, in some cases, direct witness can begin at the end of the first lesson, but usually it has to wait until a trusting relationship has been formed. So what are some of the ways you can share your personal witness? Well, from the first lesson on, your students, especially the non-Christian ones, are asking themselves the silent question, why is this teacher so kind to me? And you can answer that silent question by asking, do you know why we're teaching you? And then continue with this, we learned it from Jesus. He's our leader, the kindest person who ever lived. He fed hungry people, he healed the sick, he loved us enough to die for our sins. But Jesus arose from being dead and lives today. I want you to know him and read his story in the Bible. 
And then you could read a passage like John 3, 15 through 18, or any passage really with a redemptive message. At some point, you can also share your personal testimony about how the love of God has changed your life. And this is especially moving to a non-Christian. And the love and the friendship that you show to your students becomes a bridge for communicating God's love and His desire for friendship with them. Another way to share the faith with your student is to use a scriptural witness. To help you plan a scriptural witness, each LEI lesson has a scripture reference at the bottom right of the page. So initially, you can just read this portion or part of the passage to students and then ask observation and interpretation and application questions that will engage them in the passage of the scripture. In later lessons, though, when a student's reading well, you can ask the student himself to read the passage or to read a small portion of it. And this is an encouragement, especially for Christians who want to read the Bible. Also, when you're reading the scripture to non-Christians, remember the powerful promise of God's word in Isaiah 55, 11. He says, My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Now, besides the scripture reference, beginning in lesson 12, the name of Jesus or some type of Bible content is introduced in the lesson story. And from then on, each story now has some Bible content in the story, and often the scripture reference relates to the story. Also, in the last 26 lessons of the book, the entire lesson is based on the simplified Bible stories. This gives you a good opportunity to discuss with the student the significance of the application for each story. Other stories that would be good to share with your students are Jesus heals many people from Mark 1, 21 to 34. Jesus brings peace to a storm, Matthew 8, 23. Jesus feeds hungry people, Mark 6, 30. Peter confesses Christ as Lord, Luke 9, 18. Jesus loves children, Luke 18, 15. And Jesus talks with a man at night, John 3, 1 through 16. These are just some examples of stories that witness to the love and the saving power of Jesus Christ. Along with the literacy teacher's silent witness of love, they become powerful tools for evangelism that can lead to new Christians and new churches. The teaching guide in section one of an LEI primer also has some additional information about how to witness in the literacy lesson, so I encourage you to check that out. Now let's talk about witnessing with the card holder. The card holder is a helpful tool that you can use to display word cards. During the next section of the training, we'll actually show you how you can make your own card holder but it's a very useful tool in the classroom. You can put Bible verses or parts of verses on the card holder from the very first lesson. Just write out each verse you want to teach and then cut it into syllables and label the back of the card with the, the number of the, the lesson that it comes from. This will help you to remember where you used it. Uh, let me give you an example here. We have a card holder and we have some basic syllable cards. And this is just taking a simple verse from Spanish and condensing it. Uh, the verse is, Jesus is the light of the world. And in this case, we just have, Jesus is the light. Jesus es la luz. Uh, but I've created these syllable cards here. And again, we'll show you how to do this a little bit later on. But taking the same uh, measurements that you used to, to make all the other syllable cards, you make these cards for witnessing during the witness and discipleship section. And I have these syllables scrambled now. They're not in the correct order. But I'm just going to take the first syllable that starts the sentence, which would be Jesus. Take the first part of that. And if this is a known syllable, then you can use it as a way to reinforce what they've already learned and just ask the student, what is this? And they'll say, hey. Uh, if it's not a known syllable, uh, you can still teach it here just by saying, this is hey. Read hey. What is this? And the student will say, hey. Uh, but in this case, we're going to assume that the student has already learned um, all these syllables and all these letters that are used in these syllables. And so we're just going to ask them simply, what is this? So what is this? And the student will say, hey. Good. Bring the next part. You say, what is this? They'll say, sus. Then you put them together. Say, okay, together what do they say? The student will say, hey, sus. And then we come up here with the next word. And ask them again, what does it say? The student will say, S. We come with the next. And what does this say? La. And then we come with the last word. What does this say? Luz. So then we ask the student to read the entire sentence. Okay, please read. They'll read, Jesus es la luz. Jesus is the light. 
And then from there, you can just start to talk to the student about what is the meaning of that? What are the implications of that? In what way is Jesus the light? What's the difference between light and darkness? You can flip the lights off and turn them back on and talk about what it's like to walk around in the darkness without a guide, without a light to guide you. Uh, so there are many ways that you can uh, incorporate different parts of the literacy lesson into the witness and discipleship section. Uh, there are other examples that, that we sometimes use in early lessons. For example, God is light, God is spirit, God is love. Uh, these are simple phrases in any language. And after putting them on the card holder, you can begin the same type of dialogue with your students and just use it as a, as a bridge, as a segue into that type of spiritual conversation. Now let's look at my favorite topic, discipleship. One of the last charges that Jesus gave the apostles is found in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. But sadly, this command to make disciples is overlooked all over the world. Many people can simply become converts to Christianity or members of the church, but few people actually become true disciples or followers of Christ. Since reading God's Word is such a key element in the discipling process, literacy also becomes a necessary element in the discipleship process. The discipleship section of a literacy lesson occurs in place with the, of the witness or in addition to the witness. Discipleship happens whenever your students are already believers. The most important part of the discipleship is to meet your students at the point of their need, at their level, and show them that they can grow and mature in the faith. Reading the scripture reference at the bottom of the right hand of each lesson is a good place to start. After reading the passage, ask your students to look into the meaning and the interpretation and even the application of that scripture. Besides reading the scripture, you can ask your students about whatever struggles they might have at home. Talk about these things with them. Pray with them. Remember to always point them back to God and His Word for their ultimate answers. And offer to hold them accountable for any habits or sins they're trying to remove from their lives or struggling with. Encourage them that one day they too will be able to read the Bible for themselves at home and whenever they want to. Remember that you're not simply literacy teachers. You're evangelists, you're disciple makers, you're people that will lead others to Christ. Examine your own lives carefully too, since you'll be held at a higher standard. I want to share with you uh, another personal story that comes from a time that we spent in Nicaragua. And my wife and I, one of the first classes that we did there was in a small village called Likia. And in that village, there was uh, one main church that we went to. And we just asked people, how many of you know how to read and how many of you don't? And when we said, how many of you don't know how to read, pretty much everybody raised their hands. And even the co-pastor there, the assistant pastor of that church, was illiterate. Uh, he had never had the opportunity to study or learn how to read. So we started the class, and he was one of our students. His name was Omar. And he was so excited to learn how to read, but yet, academically, he was one of the slowest students. He really struggled uh, to the point where at the beginning, my wife and I were wondering, will this guy ever be able to learn how to read properly? Will he ever be able to read well? He struggled so much, but he prayed, and he was determined to, to read God's Word for himself. And he was the most motivated student we had. He did all his homework. He wanted extra reading assignments. And by the end of that eight-month period that we had the literacy class there, he was one of our best readers. Uh, before, when he would get up in front of the church, he would encourage them and say, Glory to God! Praise the Lord! Are you guys excited to be here? Let's give the Lord a hand praise! And all that kind of stuff that was great, but he was never able to, to preach from the Scripture. And now, he's fulfilling that shepherding role of pastoring, uh, preaching the Word of God, pulling out his Bible, reading a whole passage, and, and preaching from it now. And it's just a beautiful thing to see that transformation in his life, to go from a pastor who felt handicapped in sharing the message that God had called him to share to a pastor who was fully equipped and armed with the Word of God, the Sword of the Spirit, to preach the message to his people and to, to the villages that are in the surrounding areas as well. So I love that story of Omar, just to highlight the ability of one person to really learn how to read God's Word for themselves and to grow spiritually from it. So finally, uh, remember that the witness and the discipleship section of the literacy lesson is just as important as the reading and writing section. It's actually more important, so don't forget to do it. 
Pray that the Holy Spirit would work through you to God's glory.